Welcome to this short little tutorial on eight angle pose. Perhaps not one of the most well-known arm balances, but one that is generally considered a little easier than it looks. So stay optimistic and let's give this a go. The reason that eight angle pose is generally considered a more beginner friendly arm balance is because finding that balance point between the front and the back of the body is a little bit easier because the legs are kicked off to one side. Most arm balances like crow or any others that you might have tried, our legs are out behind us and we have to counterbalance the weight of the legs with the lean forwards of the chest. And I don't know if you've noticed, but your legs are really heavy. So with the legs kind of out of the equation and your center of gravity lower to the floor than it is in other arm balances, you might find that you can find that sweet balance point a little easier here. So because of the position that we need to put our legs into for this arm balance, you'd be good to warm up your hips beforehand with some external hip rotation. So poses like lizard or pigeon would be a perfect place to start. If you're wanting to jump straight in, just hold each of these for 30 to 60 seconds each side, and then let's give it a go. If you take your legs out in front of you and keep your legs bent to begin with, we twist our body to one side. I'm gonna to twist to the right so you can see what I'm doing. Everything that we do in one direction, you can obviously then try on the other side. One side is generally gonna be easier for you than the other, just because most bodies have a strong side and a weak side. So give both sides a try and see which one works better for you. Once you've twisted off to one side, the left hand goes between the thighs and then buries underneath the thigh. So both hands are now pointing in the right direction. And as we do that, we should notice that the left tricep and the inner left thigh are almost automatically connected. Now this is our most important part of the pose because as we start moving into it and balancing on the hands, this tricep is what's gonna be the shelf to support the balance of the legs. And then we counterbalance the weight of the legs with a lean towards our right hand with the torso. It will all become clear. So with the knees bent and we've turned to one side, we've taken note of the inner thigh and the tricep connecting. This right leg, because it has no support, there is no arm that it's going to be resting on, we want to cross that ankle over the left. The left leg is gonna hold our right leg up. So we take those hands as if they were doing a plank. So they're about shoulder width apart. The fingertips are nicely spread. So we've got a surface area to be balancing on. And we want to think of gripping the floor. So imagine the floor is like sand and you're trying to take a handful of sand. You're really holding onto the floor and that's gonna recruit a lot of strength in your fingertips, into your forearms and all the way up your arm. So to begin with, we want to try and get used to the strength that we need to find lift in the hips. We push down through those hands. We think of the thigh and the tricep staying connected. And now I'm gonna send my chest way out in front of my fingertips. I'm not going directly upwards. I'm gonna go forwards. So that means my elbows are gonna to have to bend. So I'm sending my chest forwards and seeing if I can find this hinging motion in my elbows. So my elbows are going from pretty much straight in this position to a 90 degree bend in this position. The hips have lifted, but the feet are staying down whilst we get used to this forwards and down motion to get our hips off of the floor. And if it's not particularly clear what I'm doing from this perspective, here's what it looks like from the other angle. Notice as when you do this hinging shape, that inner left thigh and the back of the left tricep stay connected and as the chest comes forwards, that thigh is resting on the back of the arm. So once we've got used to that movement of sending the chest forwards to allow the hips to lift, we've really already done the hardest part, but then let's see if we can add the feet and make it into a true arm balance. So as before, we're gonna hook the right ankle on top of the left, so this right leg has its support. We're twisting to the right, the left arm threads between the legs, hands placed like a plank pointing to the right hand side. The inner left thigh and the back of the left tricep are connected. So as we find our way into the balance, we want to really think of clamping our legs onto this arm. They're gonna hold on tight because the arm is what's holding them up. So as you find that lift in your hips, as your chest goes forwards, you're gonna squeeze your thighs together. And you may find as you do that, your feet leave the floor anyway. But squeeze your thighs together, Reach your feet away from you and let your, hand, let your body weight lean slightly towards your right back hand. So because the feet have moved a little further away from us as we extend the legs, we need to counterbalance that weight with a little bit more weight coming this way into the other supporting arm. The elbows stay squeezing in towards the body so that we can keep stable and strong in our shoulder and our upper back. And everything is very firm, core is engaged, thighs are squeezing in. Let's give it one more go. Or you can pause me and give it as many goes as you like. 
thread that arm, clamp the legs around the tricep, let the hips lift, squeeze the thighs as the toes reach away and that right elbow pulls in. Maybe even take your gaze out towards your toes and hold your balance here. If you're having trouble here, some of the issues you might be encountering is that if you can't bury your arm low enough for your inner thigh and your tricep to connect, let's say we're struggling to get it to come past the elbow, that's where we need to go back a few steps and keep working on stretches such as lizard and pigeon so that you can get this compression in the body. We might also be struggling with the fear of sending our body weight forwards. Often when I teach this to people in real life, I see them not wanting to bend their elbows. They take this position. They think of going forwards, 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 but they refuse to bend their elbows. And so there's no lift that's found. So remember that those elbows need to bend. So maybe use a cushion to place out onto the mat way in front of your fingertips. And that serves not only as a safety blanket, making you feel a little bit more secure, but it's target practice, reminding you where to send your body weight. So way out in front of those fingertips, we clamp the thighs around the tricep and we send our chest towards that pillow. If all goes wrong, we've got a nice place to fall. Another idea perhaps to try to give us a little helping hand is to use our trusty blocks. So sit yourself up onto your block, elevate those sit bones a little higher, then everything else stays the same. Thread your arm, hook your ankle. But now we've already lifted our hips that little bit further. Like I say, that lift of the hips and the chest going forwards really is the hardest part of the pose. The legs, they follow once we've nailed that bit. So lift those hips a little higher, then you'll also find that your arm is a little easier buried for this left thigh. Send that chest forwards and your hips have less distance that they need to be lifted in order for you to find that counterbalance. Not always necessary for these very challenging arm balances, but perhaps if you've practiced this many times and you're starting to become very, very comfortable with this balance, you can take a couple of options to make this harder. Option one, straight armed eight angle. We enter in the same way, we let the chest go forwards and then we see if we can straighten our arms. Or perhaps you want to try your eight angle with funky arms, which means one arm drops down onto the elbow. So enter it in the same way, lift up, chest forwards, and then your back arm drops to the elbow as you keep reaching out through your feet. Thanks for watching, and I hope you managed to find a little bit of success with your eight angle pose. If you'd like to have a go at another arm balance, you might enjoy this tutorial here for crow pose. Otherwise, check out this playlist for other yoga pose tutorials. Let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial by hitting the like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to know each time I release a new video.